stencils and masking tape can really help us do precision work and also can uh, make our process a little bit quicker especially if you're using that stencil over and over again in today's video we're going to go ahead and take a look at different ways of creating stencils with different types of uh, material so stay tuned and let's go ahead and how we can utilize these stencils on a variety of different things and welcome back to another video guys if you guys are new here my name is Ernie and I customize just about anything from promotional products to one-off gifts and custom controllers shoes jackets you name it I pretty much can customize it so let's go ahead and get started with this video first of all let's go ahead and take a look at the process of this project that I'm working on which I will be using stencils for and it'll help me recreate this photograph in five different shirts everything's going to be hand painted and we're trying to get as precise as possible or um, getting the photo as similar as possible we're going to be using two stencils uh, simultaneously on the shirts this way we can get a nice uh, replica throughout all five shirts For this particular project we're doing portraits so I'm trying to calculate the size of the face so I'm going to measure from the top of the head all the way down to the chin everything else is going to be extra I just want to make sure that the face is nice and uh, center and it's covering the majority of the shirt itself I'm going to take this measurement and put it in my design software if you don't have a design software you may have to use something else uh, to resize your photograph and be able to print it out on regular pieces of paper so uh, for now we're using illustrator um, like I said so I'm gonna go ahead and create a uh, kind of like a rough size or rough shape of the face itself and I'm gonna maximize the size of that oval to the size that I want the face to be so taking from that measurement that we did before I'm gonna resize that uh, oval and then I'm gonna resize the picture within that oval and this way I know for sure that the face is the same size that I wanted it to be on the shirt itself now if you don't have this particular software what you can do is crop your photograph all the way down to the where you want the measurements to be so from the top of the head to the chin and crop everything out and then be able to resize the entire image uh, using that measurement that you took earlier my printer tends to print very dark so what I normally do is either uh, cut down the photograph and lower the opacity so it's 50% or I add a, uh, a white kind of a square on top of it and then reduce the opacity of that uh, this way it's uh, the picture itself is kind of uh, faded a little bit and I don't waste and that much uh, uh, toner uh, so when I print as long as I'm able to see the shapes and the highlights and the shadows of the face that's pretty much all I need you can even go one step further and if you have a uh, kind of like a Photoshop of some sort then you can kind of increase the uh, contrast of the photograph and that'll help you um, distinguish the highlights and the shadows of the photograph and that'll make it easier for you to be able to cut it out in the future for this particular photograph I don't think it needs any adjustment for the contrast so I'm gonna print it just as the way it is uh, and I'm gonna tile the um, photograph or the print and uh, I'm gonna print two sides so I already know that her face is exactly the size that I want it so I'm gonna go file print and I'm gonna use my tiles setting uh, and uh, what the computer is gonna do is gonna divide the photograph in different sections and print out about six different pages with a section of each face and then all you gotta do is just uh, kind of tape it together physically before you use the stencil You can play with the orientation of the paper when you do the printing. You can print horizontal or vertical um, and try to reduce the amount of sheets of paper that you're using. Or you may need additional pieces of paper or like on the edge you need more space. This way it covers the majority of the shirt. 
or jacket or whatever it is that you're uh, working on so uh, in this case we're just gonna tape this up my laser uh, printer was low on toner so I'm just gonna go back in here and redraw some of those uh, areas that I need to focus on and know where to cut so I'll be doing that with just a regular pen So that was one way of creating a stencil, just taking that, enlarging and tiling your print and uh, you know taping it together. Uh, we're going to be using another option and that is creating an, an actual stencil using the vinyl cutter or the plotter and uh, using uh, kind of sh sheets of plastic to be able to cut it out. Um, and the only reason we're doing that is because we are using this stencil for uh, multiple shirts and I want the uh, stencil to last a little bit longer than the paper one. I normally use the paper one when I do single shirts um, but in this case we're trying to uh, do five shirts of the same portrait and I want to make sure that stencil lasts so that's why we're gonna go ahead and cut it out with the plotter as well. Normally every time I cut a stencil out what I'm looking for is the uh, the darkest areas of the eyebrow, the eyes, the bottom of the nose, of course the shape of the nose, and the shape of the lips and where the center uh, line is on the lips. Additionally, I'm also looking to get the shape of the face, which is all the way around, and where the hairline uh, meets the face as well so just different uh, details that I may need I want to make sure uh, that's uh, very visible so I know where to cut and then once all the lines are defined you can go ahead and cut everything out so the process that I normally use is I cut the entire face out of the stencil and then within that face I cut out the smaller items which is like the eyebrows and then the eyes, nose, and lips. When it comes to the shape of the hair, I normally cut a very thin line around the line which defines the hair. So I don't have to technically cut the entire thing out, you can definitely do that if you want, but I just kind of um, kind of do small cuts here and there just to give me a rough idea of where that hair is going to be because eventually I'm going to do it by hand anyways. I just want to know and at least get the volume of the hair right. And of course you can always uh, do everything freehand if you like, uh, that always works as well, but I'm trying to create... Um, uh, these shirts as quick as possible and as precise as possible so this is why I always use a stencil it helps me out it cuts my time uh, by a lot so uh, that's why I always use these uh, stencils for this particular project I'm gonna be using the shape of the face using the paper stencil but I'll be using a plastic stencil for the eyebrows the eyes and the nose and the lips uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and cut out the uh, paper stencil of the face. This way you guys can see the end result uh, just in case you're just doing everything uh, with the paper stencil. Let's just go over the stencil of the face. The eyebrows, I really cut all the way through uh, the entire eyebrow. For the particular eyes, I always uh, cut out the top portion of the eye shape and maybe half or a small percentage towards the bottom. And of course, the pupil always gets cut. Um, there's always a little line on top of the eye and I always try to cut that small little line. This way I know exactly where it falls. Um, and like I mentioned before, I will be using a a plastic stencil so I'm gonna have to create a digital file to be able to cut this out on this uh, using my plotter my vinyl cutter so let's go ahead and jump on the computer real quick and do that now in this case the process is the same 
but instead of using a uh, blade and uh, doing it by hand you're telling the printer or the plotter where to cut uh, the stencil out so essentially it's the same thing but we're doing a digital file now So the only reason why we're creating this additional stencil is just to showcase how you can create it uh, using your plotter or vinyl cutter. Um, I think the uh, paper stencil and doing it manually, if you don't have a plotter, uh, it'll definitely last between five to seven uh, uses before it starts deteriorating. If you have a lot of detail in that uh, stencil, uh, you may break down a little bit quicker, obviously, because you're, you know, uh, removing it in several times so smaller thinner uh, details when you uh, have that stencil will eventually kind of like tear off and stuff like that so um, let's go ahead and finish this one plastic one and plot it and see what it looks like So I'm going to be using this, uh, I'm not really what you call it, this uh, working uh, sheet of paper. Uh, it really helps with like using smaller pieces of vinyl or like just uh, random things like this. Um, obviously this is clear plastic so the sensors are not going to detect where exactly that paper is. So this is the reason why I'm using uh, like a backing board to be able to tell the printer uh, how big the uh, sheet of paper is or you know in this case the plastic so uh let's go ahead and cut it i went ahead and this is kind of thick so i went ahead and ran it through the machine between three to four times uh, to make sure the blade really cut uh, through everything and got all the detail in there so um yeah so uh yeah you might want to try it out depending on the thickness of your stencil material and of course if your blade is kind of used or you may need more pressure from your machine as well so make sure you test all that stuff out uh, before you tackle a big project like this All right, and before we start using our stencils for this particular project for the five shirts, let me show you some other ways you can create stencils using other materials. The most basic way to make a stencil would be using masking tape. And what you wanna do is create a, a uh, film or cover the area that you wanna stencil out. Print your design out on a regular piece of paper and then uh, glue that piece of paper on top of your tape and then cut everything together and that'll give you you know eventually a stencil on a stencil for you to be able to cut it out and of course you can always freehand a uh, drawing onto your masking tape and then cut it that way as well
here I'm just using different blades so you can see the difference of difficulty using the variety of different blades. This process works really good if you have or are working on a uh, project where the item itself is very curved or has a lot of weird angles. Uh, applying smaller pieces of tape will help you kind of get that curvature instead of like one large piece of tape. Uh, putting down ma many layers and then cutting them out, you know, it'll give you much uh, cleaner, smoother um, stencil that actually wraps around your uh, item nicely. So that's a good uh, a way of doing the stencil. But of course, if you have a lot of detail, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to be able to do. Another way of making a stencil is actually buying stencil material. This is a uh, frisket uh, craft vinyl so it's uh it's cool because it's clear you're able to see through it and you can feed it through your plotter your cricket um, so it uh, it works pretty good so uh, for smaller items like this you can always use um, a regular blade just to cut it out um, but if you have a, a vinyl cutter and are able to put smaller pieces like that in then you can definitely use that as well the benefit of it being clear kind of helps you align, especially if you're doing multiple colors, uh, aligning one color to another color is crucial and uh, you know making it clear really, really helps. But of course, you don't have to buy this specific craft uh, uh, vinyl, uh, you know, stencil material. You can always use regular, you know, vinyl material that you have just laying around. The only thing that you have to make sure is that your prep uh, item is well prepped, well painted, and well uh, protected before you use the strong adhesive uh, vinyl. Because once you take that stencil out, you know, first of all, you may have a little bit of residue onto your item, and two, if it's too strong, or the stencil, I mean, the vinyl itself is kind of uh, more of a permanent type of uh, glue, uh, it'll. <laughs> It'll definitely like pull your paint out, especially if you're doing like plastics or anything like that. So just make sure you're careful and uh, you prepare your item uh, beforehand uh, before you use these uh, stronger stencils with uh, stronger glue. Something I came across during one of my projects was being able to utilize the transfer tape that is used for your vinyl decals. You have a clear one that will definitely help uh, you know if you're doing larger areas and you just need a quick cut or um, the other one that's more frosted that one works pretty good to draw on so if you're gonna you know do a quick sketch of something um, then that's a perfect way to do it because uh, it takes pen uh, and marker really really nice uh, it doesn't bleed through and then obviously you can cut it and use it as a stencil as well all right, let's go ahead and jump back on the uh, five shirts and we're going to start off with using the paper stencil followed by the uh, plastic one and then we're going to cover um, obviously the flower this way we pr protect the white underneath and get a really nice uh, uh, flower once we finish spraying everything else. So what I'm doing with the first shirt is trying to create a process where I know I can uh, replicate it throughout all five shirts. So what I'm doing is trying to remember exactly where I lay down basic lines uh, where I can just simply dump like a single color onto uh, and uh, try to figure out where the shadows are going to fall in. And I'm trying to learn my stencils at the same time. So that first shirt is very crucial. So you want to take your time and uh, try to remember where all those shadows are and this and that. This way uh, you can paint your uh, other shirts a little bit quicker. Now, any mistakes that you come across, you wanna make sure you take care of that on this first shirt. Any highlights that you wanna have, any edits or anything like that, you wanna make sure you do it on this first shirt. Um, 
this way all the shirts look the same and you're not gradually uh, improving the shirt and then by the time you finish the last shirt it's super nice but the first one's you know kind of like okay or vice versa you spend a lot of time on the first one and then tend to get tired over time and the last one doesn't look as well so you want to make sure that whatever you're doing on the first shirt gets done on all the other shirts so you kind of you know, you know kind of balance out the work the amount of work that you have on the entire job this way they all look uh, fairly it's the same When you're doing multiple color stencils, you want to have some sort of uh, registration mark or some indication of where the stencil needs to be placed exactly. This way, every other or every shirt looks exactly the same. So in this case, I'm utilizing the shape of the flower as my kind of like big registration, if you will. This way, I know exactly where the highlights are on the eyes and the chin and the lips. So uh, that's what's happening. On, uh, this shot here. By the third shirt, you already know where exactly all the colors are going to fall in, all the shadows are going to be, and you're working so quickly that uh, some of the paint hasn't had time to dry. So just be uh, careful about that. This way your colors don't start uh, kind of bleeding to each other. So uh, make sure you have your blow dryer handy or your uh, heat gun and try to draw in between like big areas or when you're dumping a lot of, uh, a lot of color in one area. So uh, just a quick tip on that. And let's go ahead and finish this project and see what it looks like. We have one last detail and that's to put a small flag on the uh, arm. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, get the uh, transfer made uh, and then we're gonna you know, cut the little flags out and put it on each individual shirt. And uh, after that, this project should be ready to go. I also went ahead and made myself a little stencil with my signature on. This way it's quicker for me to apply the, uh, my signature and I'm going to be using that for my shirts from now on uh, so if, uh, if you have a shirt for me you'll probably have that little stencil of my signature on there so that was kind of cool well guys that's going to be it for this video hopefully you learned something and took away something from this video uh, if you have a different way of making a stencil that I didn't put down in this video go ahead and leave it in the comments below I always like to hear from you guys uh, for now take it easy and I'll see you guys on the next one. Take it easy for now.